Let's pray for Ron and also uh, Debbie and Yvette. I don't know what's going on, but for whatever reason, Ron's always here, and I know it's Yvette, and sometimes Debbie's out of town. But let's let's pray for them just for the sake of praying. Amen. So, Father, we just we thank you, Lord, that you have your hand of protection upon your people all the time. And uh, Lord, though we don't understand or know exactly why uh, these individuals are not here in the house of God today, we ask that you just cover them with your the feathers of God, that you just shelter them under the Almighty. Amen. Just protect them and keep them. Yes. Whatever the situation or circumstances yes, they're facing, yes, that you just be with them and bless them until we can be together again. We ask your blessing upon them. Your protection and your provision in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, John. Yeah, there's another uh, individual that's not been here much, uh, but he did come back for a while. Lord, it's laying on my heart to recall. Yeah. <laughs> Father, we just thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
for those that are not able to be here this morning, for yes, whatever for, uh, for Rick Hall, for Roy, and, and Karen, for uh, Rita, for, for, uh, for Peter and Jamie, Ron. any others that I may have left out that I'm not thinking of right now, but yes, you know, wherever they are, yes. you are with them. Yes. And we just pray that your hand, not only of protection, but provision and blessing is with them. That they feel the presence of God where they are. That they would just experience the love of God, the favor of God, in whatever the situation they find themselves in at this very moment. God, that you are with them and blessing them. And they're being touched by your presence in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. you keep them. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. In your Hallelujah. In your possession, Lord, they belong to you. Yes, yes Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. I, I just want to, let me just say this. I, I saw this the other day. I want to, I'm thinking about it now just because of what we're talking about. And uh, uh, welcome to everybody that's on Facebook. Sorry if I'm kind of drifting off here and floating around. I'm in the same chaos everybody else is in. Praise the Lord, so just join the club. But we welcome everybody on Facebook. Appreciate you being with us. And uh, God speaking uh, to you as he is to us. Yeah. But there's a scripture in Numbers chapter 7. And it's the only prayer uh, that's identified as God's prayer. That God himself prayed. And it's in Numbers chapter 7, verse, beginning at verse 24. And it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Yes. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious yes. unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Praise the Lord. And so... Here's, here's the Hebraic, it it's, sounds different. The English translations are usually a little bit minimalized in comparison because Hebrew has so many uh, other ways of expressing words that have the same meanings and so on and so forth. But here is the, uh, as close to a exact Hebraic translation to English as you can get. And it says, and remember this is God speaking to us. Mm -hmm. He who exists kneels in front of you. Guard you with thorny protection. Illuminate the wholeness of his being. And provide you with perfect love. Lift up and carry you. Supporting you with divine embrace. Give you peace, shalom. All that you need to be. Whole, complete, healthy. Peace, safety, wealth. And then the last thing he says, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Yes. And he says, my presence on you. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's my prayer for all of us yes. today. For those that are here, for those that are not able to be here. Uh, but God's prayer, he's with us. Yes. He'll never leave us or forsake us. That's he embraces true. us. His love for us is so much more than we have any, right. any concept of. It's just, he wants, we, 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 it's so easy to get hung up in the King James and forget that this is a personal God. Yes. And I mean, the King James is beautiful, it's poetic, yep. but it's not normal language. We all know that. Yep. But God speaks to us in the way that each one of us can understand. In the, in the language that each one of us sure. relate to, whether it's English or whether it's the colloquialisms yes. or the, uh, the way that we speak within the language. That's how he talks to us, the way we understand it. He's, he's personal. He's right. private. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Okay, let's, let's get to the Word of God. Again, and welcome everybody on Facebook. Appreciate you being part of the service today. And uh, we love you. You are a part of this church. Amen. And we're grateful for your being with us. So let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is Jesus speaking in, a, in the synagogue. Uh, he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And let's go to Mark chapter 6 and read verses 1 through 6. Mark 6, 
verses 1 through 6. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he giveth? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph of Judah and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty works, save that he laid his hand upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went about the villages teaching. Jesus was a teacher, by the way. And teaching overcomes unbelief. When he taught and he prayed for people, and because of their closeness to his upbringing, they didn't have faith to be healed because of it. And what did he do? Throw up his hands and quit? No, he just went about every little village he could come to and teach. All right, John chapter 3 and verse 27. John 3, 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, devil, I just rebuke you, lion, snake, and just back off, because we're going to have church whether you like it or not. That's right. How much you try to interfere. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are defeated. Yes. You're under our feet. Yes. yes. And we declare right now, Back off, yep. or you're going to reach your destination sooner than the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the two things ought to dominate the way that we think. Humans do not have the ability to grasp divine things, <clears throat> but that ability can be given to us from heaven or from the spirit realm. And it's clear in the scripture that spiritual things are hidden by a veil yes. <clears throat> and by nature, right? In fact, just naturally speaking, humans don't have the ability to comprehend or get a hold of those spiritual things. So we, from a natural human perspective, can take doctrine, we can take scriptures, we can take uh, creeds, we can take theology, and they become like a wall without a gate. Natural man stands in the darkness, and around him is the intellectual knowledge of God. God even said it himself, everywhere you look, it's testifying of me. It's in nature, in natural. But that's not the knowledge of God. Right. There's a difference between intellectual knowledge of God <clears throat> and spirit revealed knowledge. Yes. yes. And that's the age, that's the time, that's where we're, what yes. we're moving into. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where it's going to take that kind of knowledge. You can't just know about God, you're going to have to know God. Right. Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. So God knows Himself. And the Holy Ghost knows God, because the Holy Ghost is God. Yeah. Amen? And no man can know God except by the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Amen. So to disregard this truth is to shut out spiritual things from your own understanding. Mm -hmm. To think that without the Holy Spirit, we can know the things of God is ridiculous. Right. Because he's the only one that really knows God. Right. So without him, we can't know God. We can know about God, but we can't know him. Right. Look at Isaiah chapter 58, verses 8 and 9. 
I've got a, a, a hunger for intimacy with God that I've, that I've never known. I've always, loved, I've always wanted to know more about God or know more of God or have a closer relationship, but there's something going on different, altogether different now than has ever been in my life. Amen. And that's not to say that I haven't loved God or haven't pursued the things of God. It's just that it's God that's done it. It hasn't me. I didn't just wake up one day and decide, okay, I'm going to discipline myself now and really know God. No, God's just been messing with me and won't leave me alone because He wants me to want Him more yes. than I ever have yes. in my life. Yes. And that's because I have to. Yes. Yes. Because the, the age that we're living in is going to require this. Mm -hmm. So then shall they, thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. And thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity, or just intellectual knowledge. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. So listen, the natural man, the psychic man, the man of the mind, or a man of intellect, cannot understand or receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him, because they are spiritually discerned, not intellectually learned. Amen? Philippians chapter 3 and 12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. God gave us His Spirit to apprehend <clears throat> Himself. Yes. And intellect He gave us to apprehend theology. <clears throat> There's a big difference. That's why an idiot can be born again. Yes, yes. But he may not ever get a degree in theology. Right. But the, the doctor of theology may never get born again. Right. That's right. There are two different planes that, that, that yeah. exist. Yeah. So look at John chapter 16, verses 12 through 14. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. This is before the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus was here with his disciples, and he's talking to them. He said, there's, all, there's so much I want to share with you. There's so much I want to tell you. But you're not ready. You, you couldn't grasp what it is I'm telling you, because it would all go through your mind. It would have to be intellectually understood, because you don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Amen. Right? right? So listen, the natural man, the psychic man, the man of intellect, cannot understand these things. And that's plain enough. What he says right here, the one who reveals God to us, the one who reveals Jesus to us, is the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. And so, if you have this, just for example, if you have this desire for God, if you have given yourself to God, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, listen, that didn't happen because you had a, you, you a wake-up call one day. Because you got really smart. Mm -hmm. It happened because the Holy Spirit drew yes. you. Yes. Because nobody can come to God except by the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yes. Right. You wouldn't have enough sense to come to God intellectually, no, no matter no. how bright you are. No. Right. Otherwise, every doctor of theology would be born again and they'd be preaching a whole different message than the junk that we're hearing from. Amen. So look at 1 Corinthians now, chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. Because we're coming into a time when the Spirit is going to move more and more through different people. And I know what's going to happen. I know one of the things that's going to happen is I've already seen this. Some people are going to get paranoid because they're not experiencing the same thing somebody else is in terms of their gift or their activating of the gift. Come on. And it's going to start freaking people out. And I'm telling you, that's not the case. 
you have as much spiritual yes. ability yes. as anybody yes. else has. Whether you Jesus. use it or not is another right. thing altogether. Thank right. you, Jesus. So don't get your eyes fixed on people. Right. right. Keep your eyes fixed on the Holy Ghost right. because He's yes. the one who's initiating these things. Yes. And He'll do the same thing with you if you'll yield to it. He'll just do it in a different way because yes. you're different. Yes. yes. Thank because you, one person does it a certain way doesn't mean that's the way it's done. It just means that's the way they do it. Yes. We're all unique. Yep. Yes, he Lord. didn't want us to be cookie cuttered into some mold where we all just echo out the same right. way of doing everything. No way. Right. So just because you're not doing that doesn't mean you're not as gifted or as saved or as full of the Holy Ghost right. as anybody else. Yes. Hallelujah. You may be more your personality may be, may be more timid. You need to maybe pray for boldness. Yes. For courage. Yes. yes. For some guts. Yes, Lord. But it doesn't mean you don't have the ability or the capability because the same Holy Spirit is in you that's in anybody else. Who's Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And we're I'm telling you, we're coming into a time where God's going to want to use everybody. He's going to have to use everybody to accomplish what He wants Amen. to accomplish. Amen. So if you're going to start measuring yourselves by somebody else's activating of gifts, you're going to be freaked out. Mm -hmm. Because you're, the way you activate that gift will not be identical to the way they did it, and it shouldn't be. Right. Absolutely. Right. If that, were, if we we're all going to do it the same way, he only needed one person. Right. Then. That's right. right. He needs all of us because all of us have unique personalities. All of us are different. All of us relate to people and yes. and our environment and everything differently. Yep. And believe me, there's other people that relate to it the same way you do. Yep. Hallelujah. And you're the one that can reach them. That somebody else with a different prophetic outreach or, or gifting is not going to be able to reach you because they're going to go, oh, they're so weird. That's right. Yeah. But to some people, they're going to go, that is God. Hallelujah. And it is. Yes. But it's just as much God the way that you do it. Mm -hmm. yes, it it's just a different. Yes. Right? It's all by the Holy Spirit. So how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor are the princes of this world that come to naught. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's important not to stop there. Because there is a little conjunctive but yeah. right mm -hmm. after this in verse 10. There. But, as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man but the things which God hath prepared for them. Verse 10. Okay. But, God hath revealed them unto us. Nobody got this stuff by intellect. Nobody got this by studying hard. Nobody got this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with any of that. I'm just saying that isn't how you get it. God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. Yes. How much plainer can it be? Right. Amen. Spiritual things are not apprehended by the eye or by the ear. Amen. Not by intellect. But by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. The mysteries. Yes. The things that aren't just on the surface here. Right. That don't just come to your intellect. They come to you and they, they sound crazy. Verse 11. Verse 11. <clears throat> For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. That's what we might call intuition. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with intuition or intuition. God gave it to us. Right. In fact, that's how I know I'm me. It's how I know I'm not somebody else. It's by intuition, by intuition. How do you know you're you? How do you know you're not somebody else? Well, see, are you nuts? 
I know who I am. How? By intuition. Self. You know. You. Are you? Yeah. If you're not, you're schizophrenic. Yeah. You got a mental issue. You got a problem. Yeah. If you're gonna walk, if you walked into a, a a room and there were a dozen other people who looked exactly like you. Now I tell, let me tell you a story. This is a true story. When I was a kid, from the time I was about 12 years old, uh, in fact before that, but from 12 on, I worked in the gas station for my dad. And I also delivered furniture and stuff as I got older. But before that, I mowed the grass and I raked the gravel. I mean, it was like the Marine Corps dam. But this was the Hamlin house, basically. <laughs> but I worked every weekend, every holiday, I, I was pumping gas, changing oil greasing cars, washing cars, sweeping the driveway, cleaning the bathrooms. That's what we did, all of us boys. So my mother and my dad one Saturday were in Des Moines for some reason or another, and they were coming by what used to be East Town Pool. We all remember East Town? Up there on Pump. And uh, they were driving along, and they saw me coming out of the pool, coming out of the pool area, or out of the sidewalk to come out that runs parallel to the street, they saw me. And my dad said, he's supposed to be at work. He slammed on the brakes, put it in reverse, and backed up and started yelling at me. But it wasn't me. It was somebody who looked just like me. My mother thought it was me, too. And they drove up, because there weren't cell phones back in the day to the top of the hill, to Hilltop, where there was a grocery store back in those days, and went in, and my dad called the gas station. And guess who answered? Hamlin Service. Hallelujah. <laughs> Me. And he was dumbfounded. About the only time I ever heard him not be able to speak. Yeah. And he just kind of stammered and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm working. <laughs> he hung up. But what I'm saying is, if you were to walk into it, see, it happens. There are people that look like you. Now, if I'd have seen him, I might not have, I might not have thought he looked like me. But I'm telling you, my mother and father were sure it was me. Mm -hmm. I pitied that poor kid. He must have been totally freaked out. Who are these crazy people yeah. screaming at me? <laughs> right? But anyway, if you were to walk to, <clears throat> into a room or into an area and yeah, you see a dozen other people who look exactly like you, it would be weird. For sure. <clears throat> but you would probably, I know I'd just probably smile and say, wow, what a, what a weird coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> what a freaky moment. You know? What the heck? I've never, this is crazy. Hmm. Now maybe if there were others with me who know me, they wouldn't know the difference. But I wouldn't wonder which one was me. We, in, we maintain individuality because of intuition. So let me apply this to the church. And I'm going to get into some weird stuff here at the end, but I'm just, that's, I'm just going to do it. Praise the Lord. We forget there are some things that we can't get hold of with our minds. But we run around trying to get hold of them with our minds. Our intellect comes from God, too. That's great. And it has its own work to do. But that work is not apprehending spiritual things. That's of the Holy Ghost. And I've talked about the miracles we've seen, the people that I've prayed for, different things, and I'm not going to go through that. There were many others that I haven't talked about, but I'm just saying it's happened. John might remember Sheila asked me one time uh, to talk to a friend of hers who was going through some issues. She didn't tell me anything about the friend, anything about the issues. That night I had a dream. It was the weirdest dream I think I ever had. It was so weird that I wrote it down. That's how bizarre it was. The next day, I was to meet, or the couple of days, whatever it was, I was to meet with this girl. So I said, Sheila, if you, you know, so there's no freaking 
people thinking there's any hanky-panky or anything going on. You bring her, and I'll meet you at the church, and I'll be happy to talk to her. So she did. And we met, in fact, I was sitting right, I was sitting in that pew, and they were sitting in the one right behind me. And she started talking. I just was going to let her kind of blow off and find out where she was coming from, because I didn't know what was going on and everything about it. So she started talking about some things. And the more she talked, the more every hair on my body started standing up. I mean, it was just getting crazy. And I said, wait a minute, just stop right there. I went back to the office, I got my Bible, and I took those notes out from the dream that I had. And I said, I, I just want you to listen. And when I'm done, you can say I'm completely nuts, or you'll know that God's spoken to you. And I read the dream. It was things like, I'm driving down this road, and I come up on this real high street. It's real high up, and there's this building up here. I, go, I mean, it's, it's, it's really bizarre, but anyway, I go into the house, she's lying in a the bed, there's uh, three little girls playing around on the couch, there's a, a safe-like thing over here, I open it up, and there's some stuff in there, and I don't want to go into all of it, but nevertheless, here's, here's the way it went. She's sitting there like this, just freaking. She lives on High Street. The name of the street is High Street. She lives in a high-rise, or a high apartment like thing up there. She had had three miscarriages. They were all three girls. She didn't have any living children. I don't believe that. Not that I was aware of anyway. But she had three miscarriages, all three of them were girls. That's who I saw playing in the room while she's lying in the bed. Her husband came into and told her to get up. And she said, you leave me alone. You, you, you just back off. Well, they had separated because of some of the issues, some of her stress and problems. So I opened the, the safe, and, uh, but I couldn't get into it. There was something in there that I wanted to get, but I couldn't get to it. I couldn't reach it. And it was a wreath or something. I can't remember now. But anyway, it was, a, it, it was her mother. It was about her mother. And she knew immediately that that was her mother, that she was unable to communicate with. She was unable to have connection with. To me, the dream was insane. It was an insane dream that had no connections in any way. But yet it was so profound, it was so heavy on me that I wrote it down because it was so crazy. Yeah. And it would usually, you know, we have everybody has crazy dreams, yeah. disconnected thoughts and so forth. But I have them and I wake up and I go, well, that was weird. Yeah. But I forget it. Mm -hmm. Within five minutes it's gone. I can't I couldn't recall any of them, mm -hmm. right? This one would not go away. Mm -hmm. So anyway, she was freaked out because it spoke directly to the situation and the circumstance and everything else. And I thought, sure, this gal is going to be born again and be a part of this church. She was flabbergasted by it. She knew it had to be God because there was no way I could know this stuff because Sheila hadn't told me anything. Sheila hadn't said anything about the woman. I'd never met her or do anything about her. But she didn't. She moved off to, I don't know where she moved, to south, somewhere down south, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember the name, but she moved and never was a part of, of the church. But God wanted to speak to her and let him know that he was real yes. and that he could identify with yes. her, that he could touch her yes. through with these things. It wasn't about me. I, I didn't have, I had people coming to me after that with dreams for several years. And some of them I could interpret and most of them, it was more psychological than it was spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You live long enough and you know some things just connect, right? But that was a that. See, what I'm saying is, we all have this ability. Yes. We just have to be in a position where it can be used, yes, yes. and be willing then to use it. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, this woman was looking for somebody who would give her some direction. Yes. And what God was saying was simply, I know everything you've been through. Mm -hmm. I know the pain. I know the loss. I know the hurt. I'm the answer. Mm -hmm. She was awed by the fact that I had this information and the way that it connected kind of metaphorically with yeah. her reality. But she wasn't ready for God. If that had been me, I'd still be running around the parking lot freaking out. Probably. <laughs> but that's just the difference of people. What I'm just trying to say, the things, 
where I had prayed for people, I never felt adequate. I always felt inferior. I always felt like this ain't going to work, and I'm going to look like a moron. And, and that was the case sometimes. The, the, the young man had died. Nothing. I wanted more than to see him healed. I fasted. I did everything possible. And he, I don't know why. I don't know what I didn't do or what I did do. I don't know what the deal was. If it had anything to do with me. I couldn't take credit for anything that I did. So I shouldn't feel responsible for something that didn't happen right. when I wanted to. What I'm saying is, there was no difference in me. The difference was in my just willingness to do what I was being asked to do, what God wanted me to do. Yeah. It is that way for all of us. Yeah. And I wasn't ever, believe me, I was never the super spiritual person. I mean, I was spiritual. I just wasn't that kind of guy. I, I taught New Congress course. It was a big church, a big church. The church, the New Congress class was much bigger than the, than the biggest church that we've ever had here in terms of numbers. There'd be 40, 50 people in the New Congress class. That's how many people were getting born again in that church. I taught junior high. I taught... And the junior high class got so big that we had to separate it from the girls from the boys because we couldn't get them all into one room. This is a huge, a big church and a new church, a new building. So there were, it wasn't like they were little tiny rooms. They were big rooms. Yeah. I drove the Sunday school bus, went around knocking on doors to bring kids to school on Sunday. Then eventually I became the head of the bus ministry. And on and on until I, at one point I ended up becoming an assistant to the pastor. But I was never like, mm, let's say a faith. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that. I was, <laughs> I was eating Granny, what was her name? Aunt Dolly. I was eating Aunt Dolly's biscuits and drinking coffee with everybody else. Yeah. Mayha jelly. I'm talking about salad, man. I mean, we'd get to ch church on Sunday mornings at 6.30, 7 o'clock, and the bus ministry would meet, we'd have prayer, we'd eat biscuits and mayhem jelly and drink coffee, and the bus ministry would go out. I'd teach a Sunday school class, the, the junior high class for the most part, and then eventually the, the uh, new Congress class. I mean, most of the people in that church were second, third generation Pentecostals. Holiness, Jesus' name, yeah. Pentecost. It was weird. And I always felt kind of outside the, what I'm saying, the core. But what I'm saying is, God wants to be anybody yes. that wants to be you. Yes. Amen. And there's only way you can be used, and that's by the Spirit. Amen. And you don't have to be a geek. A weirdo to be spiritual. All right. Praise the Lord. Our intellect comes from God, and that's a good thing. But as I said, that work is not apprehending spiritual things. That's the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with religion. Religion teaches you that you can learn spiritual truths or that they can be learned or perceived intellectually. <clears throat> Amen. They can't. You can get lots of information. You can know everything about God. But the only way to know God is by the Spirit. It's the Spirit who wrote the Bible and who has to inspire the Bible. That's why we can read it, and then all of a sudden we read it, or every time we read it, over the course of years, you go deeper and deeper yep. and deeper. Why? Because the Spirit is revealing more and more of God through His Word. Even though it's the same Word that you read 10 years ago. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that by inspiration, the Bible was written. 
God inspired men to write by the Spirit. It's a spiritual act. Amen? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So let's go back to our opening, one of our opening Scriptures, John 3, 27. But you don't get anything. We don't receive anything except it comes from heaven. John Anderson said a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So here's part of what I'm trying to say. The method of, of winning a, another person to God is a spiritual method, not human. Believe me, when I first went to Ankeny after being in, in Texas for a few years and going to start a church there, I read every book that was available on church growth, on church planting. Believe me, I had them all. And I read them all. But intellect won't get it done. That's right. There isn't an eight-step program to building a church. Now, there may be, but it's just going to be a building with people in it. They might come to church. They might come to a Bible study. But nobody comes to God except the Spirit draws them. And that's my point with the lady that I had the dream. To me, it was so profound. I thought, my God, I'd have fallen on my face and cried out to Jesus right now. Not because I, not because of me, right. but because God was so intimately yes. involved in her life yep. and was telling her, look, this is what I know about you. Right. But the Spirit wasn't gone. He was reaching for her, but he wasn't gone. So you might know about God, but not know God. Mm -hmm. It's only by the Holy Ghost we can yes. know God. Think about Peter. Look, look at in Acts chapter two, verse thirty-six. What he says. He's preaching to these to these Jews. Acts chapter uh, two, verse thirty-six. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. <coughs> right. Now, he could have reasoned that forever to get to that place. But he had a Holy Ghost revelation clear back when Jesus was still alive. When Jesus said, who do men say that I am? And well, there's some of them saying this and some are saying that. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said what he preached three years later. And it wasn't because he had all kinds of theology. He had a revelation because we know he was pretty dense when it came to everything else. Mm -hmm. But God spoke to him by the Holy Spirit. So that was a reality hit for him. That was a truth. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. 1 John 2, 27. 2, 27. Come on, computer. 2. Come on. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Keyboard's acting up. First John 2 27. Yep, I'll get that. He's working. I know he is. I know it. Of course. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Praise, 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 praise the Lord. Lord. <laughs> the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Let me read it again. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Now what's that mean? You need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you, right? 
The man who wrote this was a teacher. And one of the gifts of the Spirit is teaching. What it says is that your knowledge of God is not taught to you from without. It's received by an inner anointing. And you don't get your witness from a man. You get your witness from an inner anointing. Yes. I'm, te I'm, I'm telling you, I'm giving you his, yes. my history, okay? Praise the Lord. Yes, we, we need teachers. That's a gift from God. It's, it's, a, it's one of the gifts of the Spirit. But that teacher, you're not learning from the outside in. You're learning from the inside out. That's the, I, the whole point of this. That God was teaching me as much as He was trying to reach that girl. Yeah. You can, you can address their intellect and, and show them these awesome, weird, strange things that had to come from somewhere besides your brain because you didn't know any of this. But unless, so you're teaching, you're teaching something, but it isn't having an impact because there's not an inner witness. Why? Because she isn't born again. She doesn't have the Spirit yes. of God, and the Spirit of God was not working on her. Yes. God, it had more to do with me, and I didn't know it at the time, than it had to do with her. Yes. Now, would have God rejected her? Of course not. He, he would, would want her to come to, to Christ, but he was trying to teach me something at the same time. It's like the time I wake up and I'm and God is talking to me about doing this thing and doing that in the church and I was fed up and frustrated and He said and I said but God I have no man I, I literally said that how pathetic but I did I don't have anybody to to put me in the pool man I mean nobody to get me into the anointing and the Lord said I got a guy right. I've got a guy in Arkansas. Yeah. Gave me the town. I, you all heard the story. And we went the whole whole thing. And uh, my daughter sitting back there in the back row had to, she, she was computer literate and I wasn't. But she helped me through the old mammoth age of computers that we had back in those days to find this town. Because it wasn't on any map. Because it wasn't really a town. It was just an incorporated area. But it had a name. Dooley, Arkansas. And I went to Dooley, Arkansas because I thought, sure, the Holy Spirit's going to fall on me there and some God knows I may be raptured. You know, maybe an Enoch kind of thing or something. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I just knew this is God because there's no way I would know He would say, i got a guy in Dooley, Arkansas lying in my bed at 4 o'clock in the morning in the country and I go looking for this place because it's so big on me. It's so real. It's like the dream. It was just so, you know, God. And my daughter finally finds it. And I drive there. There's nothing there. There's a church that nobody goes to. And I go up and talk to people that live up in that area. Ah, oh, there's nobody there. That's a black church. And, and they only come there about once a month. They have a celebration there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm thinking, but there's got to be something. I didn't come all this way. God didn't do, give me all this stuff. And I go, so I go up the road. And there's these two rednecks sitting, spitting tobacco and drinking beer, sitting outside this old building in a shed. And I stopped. And I went in and I said, because the person, I, I said, well, who, who pastors that church? Is, is there any, you know, churches around it? Well, there's this Pentecostal church up the road there, but some woman gave the name of the woman, and I, so I went up, and I'm trying to find a church. I can't find it anywhere, so I stopped, and these guys, and I'm thinking, oh, this, this would be great, because they look like they're probably really spiritual. <laughs> and, uh, well, I don't know. There's some gal over there that preaches that, but he said there's a black pastor. He's the assistant. I think he lives right over here, a couple doors down. So I went over there. He wasn't there. His daughter said, well, his wife passed away recently, and he had gone to some, I forget the town, but he had gone to some other town with one of the grandkids to do something. He won't be back till 4 o'clock. I said, do you suppose I could see him before? Would it, would it be you know, big in a position. She said, no, I'm sure he'd be glad to talk to you. So I went back down to the empty church at the graveyard, sat down there and prayed for a few 
three or four hours, however long it was, at four o'clock, and I come back, and he's just pulled in the driveway as I pull in behind him. And I'm walking down the driveway, and I said, you're so, brother so-and-so, and he said, yeah, he said, what can I do for you? And I said, well, I, I said, you're going to think I'm nuts, <clears throat> but I, I had a dream, and God spoke to me about this town and said that he had a man <clears throat> in Dooley, Arkansas, that would be able to help me. And I said, and I can't find anybody else, so I'm thinking, you must be the man. And he said, well, he said, you could come and, and, and preach. I said, look, I'm not looking for a pulpit. I, I, I've got a place to preach. I don't, I, that's not what I'm after. God said he had a man here, and I'm trying to figure out who that man is. And he, without another word, he just reached out and put his hand on my forehead. And he said, God, give him his hands. Mm -hmm. hmm. He was the man that God was talking about. But what God was showing me was, here's a guy, a black man, in this redneck area that he leads me to. Now you can think what you want to, but I know me. And I'm thinking, this is going to be outrageous. This is going to be like a blow-up thing. It's going to just explode. And no, he knew God. He knew the Lord. And he just reached out, put his hand on me, and said, Father, give him the answer. Yeah. Give him the answer. He didn't say, yeah, I'm the man. Mm -hmm. He didn't do any of that. He just said, I'm going to do what God has given me the ability to do, mm -hmm. and that's to pray and declare over this man the answer to his quest. Right. What God showed me from that, because I had run after Rodney Howard Brown, I'd gone after, you know, Bill, what's his face, and everybody. I'd run to every big meeting that there was to get an anointing, to get my hand, somebody to pray for. Me. God took this black man yep. in Dooley, Arkansas, yep. a guy that nobody else knew, and I'm not putting him down because he's black, I'm just saying he was a man in a wow. town that nobody even knew existed, they wouldn't have known he existed, they would, didn't even know the town existed. And that's where God sent me. Yeah. To get a revelation where I had been running to all of these big name preachers just wanting somebody to lay their hand on me and give me an anointing or give me an impartation of some kind. And what God was showing me, this is between me and you, Nate. Yes. And until you understand that, you'll be chasing your tail all over this countryside and get right. nothing. Right. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry for taking you back down these rabbit trails and stuff, but I'm telling you, these things didn't happen by accident. They weren't just for me to be able to blow myself up. It was, I'm actually telling you how ignorant I was and what God had to deal with me. But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. It comes from the Lord, it doesn't come from somebody. Sometimes we need that encouragement from somebody. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the closer you can get to you and God right. and eliminate as many people out of the middle of that relationship yes. as possible, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. First Corinthians 1, 18, 19. Praise the Lord. 18 and 19. I, if I didn't believe this was the Lord, I'd just, just, had, I'd just say praise the Lord and wrap the book up and just go home. I just, I really believe God is the one to speak. Amen. And he doesn't have any choice. I'm the one he's got to support with. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Verse 25. 
Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now verse 27 through 29. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Amen. Praise God. See, the Holy Spirit rules out all of Adam's flesh. All of human brightness and brilliance and intelligence, ability, efficiencies. It makes Christianity depend on a perpetual miracle. Yes. That's us as believers. Spirit-filled people. Yes. Perpetual miracles. That's why we aren't understood by the people of the world. We're strangers. We come to this world by the new birth. We're made alive by the Spirit. Our life is completely, or at least it should be, different from the world. 1 Corinthians 2.15. And I don't mean that we need to be weird. I just mean just the things that I've talked about. Y'all have done things similar to that. God has spoken to you, and, and, and if, if, if he had said it to the person sitting next to you, they'd have said, what? Mm -hmm. And you said, oh my God, I need to act on this. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. Right. He was using a voice that everybody could hear, but the voice you heard mm -hmm. was spirit. It wasn't just words. And it magnified in you, and so right. you had to do something. You had to go pray for that person. You right. had to say, Mom, Yep. Right? Yep. God's healing. It, it, it'll work. we got to believe it, right? Yep. We're hearing the same things, but we're hearing it in a different way. Sure. He that is spiritual judgeth all things. Get this now. <laughs> he that spiritual judges all things, and yet himself is judged of no man. One of the few yeehaws that I get out of this, praise the Lord. The Spirit which is us, being us, yep. spirit being, yep. have a penetration, have a ability to see inside, in a way, that judges everything. But he himself can be judged with nobody. Verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So what do we do with this truth? Argue about it? <clears throat> Say, it's, well, it's good. I mean, that's a good thing. Or do we do something about it? Let the light shine, is what God is saying. The light that lighteth every man that yes. comes into the world. Yes. A flash of light in a dark world. It's a revelation. It's a manifestation of the Spirit. Yes. Now let me, now I'm going to just go off into weird land here for a moment. But because when I was putting this message together, this came apart, came, came up, and I thought, oh my God. I don't know where this other thing was going. But now I know. Because we are unique, because we have intuition, because God speaks to each one of us differently. Even as believers, I can be sitting next to Sally and God can speak and, and Sally hear one thing I'm hearing. I heard the words, but I didn't hear any kind of unction. I didn't get any, why? Because he wasn't talking to me. He was talking to her. And now how? Because each one of us have this intuition that separates us from everybody else. Even if they're really like us, even if they're a brother or a sister or a twin, right. we still know who we are. Yep. And we 
perceive in a little bit different way. Do we not? Even yeah. we're raised in the same town. Go to the same school, eat the same foods, watch the same TV shows, listen to the same music, and yet I pick up things that you don't. And you see things and hear things in that that I don't. I'm listening to a song and I'm going, whoa, this is cool. And you're going, man, I hate that. That is sucks. You know? Right? What? Because we're different. Even though we're the same, we hear differently. We perceive differently. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because it can teach to everybody, but everybody's not hearing the same thing. Everybody's not hearing it the same way because every one of us is different. Every one of us has our own intuition, our own self-perception. So you perceive things different than me, even though it's the same thing. I'm just yeah. making you crazier and you're with me. Praise the Lord. Look, so here's what I'm showing. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. Now this is the word of God. This is what I'm saying. He does it, he does it to us all the time. God said, let there be a firm. Look, when I, when I, when I'm just out, I can't stop. When we were in the church there, and we had these huge prayer rooms. We had prayer rooms. The men's prayer room and the women's prayer room. The men's prayer room was bigger than this church, bigger than this sanctuary, right? The women's prayer room, same way. Yeah. And before every service, and even when there were some church services, you could go there and pray. You could just go in there and shut the lights off and dim them down and, and just go in there and pray. Sometimes there'd be other people praying. Sometimes there wouldn't. You could always find an alcove, a little corner someplace, and you could go pray by yourself. God was dealing with me. I didn't think, look, I, I didn't want to be a preacher I didn't want to be a pastor. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. But I felt something just wouldn't leave me alone. And so I told the Lord. I said, uh, you know, I don't hear you. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. So this guy better be sincere. He better be honest. I was talking about my pastor. Because I said, I, I'm not hearing from you. And so whatever he says, I'm going to believe it's coming from you. So don't let him screw me up. So I just went about volunteering for everything. Did I not? I mowed the grass. I put up the signs. I did anything I could do. I just did it because I wanted God. I, I lived far enough away from it and into everything other than God that when I had that opportunity, I knew something real had happened. I didn't understand it, but I knew that it was real and I wanted it. I wanted it, all of it. And so I did all this stuff. So I'm in there praying one day and I said, God, if you're dealing with me, because I kept thinking, you know, God, you're, trying, you're, you're telling me you want me to preach. I don't even know how to teach a Sunday school class. I was teaching junior high in Sunday school. And I was teaching with a woman that was about eight years old, I think, who was born in Pentecost. I don't remember her name now. Her and, this, and the young man was about my age who had been raised in the church. And they, they, were, uh, they knew more than everything. I didn't know anything. But I'm, so I'm in there trying to teach, trying to do what I could, and I'm in the prayer room praying, and I'm thinking, God, I, this can't be right. You can't be calling me to preach. I, it, it, it's, it makes no sense. But I said, okay, if it is, then you, you tell Brother Edwards, and he can tell me. I come out of the prayer room. I swear to God, I walked out of the prayer room. I started back down the hall to where the, the office wing was, and I no more got to the, through the door into the office wing, and the pastor steps out of his office. He said, Nathan, I need to talk to you. I'm thinking, okay, I screwed up. I said something I shouldn't have said in the junior high Sunday school class and somebody's gone home and told the parents. And, and that's yeah. what I, honest to God, that's what I thought. I said something that was uh, blasphemy or something. You know, so that they're going to run me out of town or something. And I, I wanted to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we got in there, good job, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. We go in the office and he said, you know, uh, he had been in Houston or somewhere preaching the weekend before. And he, he said, I was on my way back. And he said, I've been praying because he said, uh, Brother, uh, I forget his name now, Brother Marty Gibson had been, his, had been working as an assistant for him and he had left to go to Florida to start a church. And so he said, uh, I was driving back and he said, I was thinking, I need, I need some young guy just out of Bible college or I need somebody to, to assist me, somebody to be an assistant to the pastor. Not to be the assistant pastor, but to be an assistant to the pastor. He didn't have an assistant. And uh, 
And he said, I'm, so I was praying, and I'm thinking, you know, some kid out of Texas Bible College or one of these places over here. And he said, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you've got already got one. And he said, this shows you how, how much I was on his heart. He said, who? And he said, Nathan. And from that moment on, Sally will tell you, they did everything imaginable to get me licensed, to get me involved. They gave us a church band because our Chevy Chevette shot craps for the last time and couldn't get it running anymore. We used it as our own personal vehicle as well as a church vehicle. Uh, they, they gave us $1,000 a month for the first year that we came back here when we were back here trying to start a church. They, the church there paid us $1,000 a month. A month just to, because they could and supported us and and he bent over backwards to do whatever he could to get us involved to get us in we went to Alexandria Louisiana to big camp meetings and different things and all this stuff so anyway I'm just saying that was God mm -hmm. it was just God and it it was God showing me how he could speak to me through people and if, like you said but anyway God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse 8. And God called the firmament heaven, and the, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So firmament is it's literal, it's real, but it's also a parable for the real. Okay? Look at Psalms 29, verse 3. The voice of the Lord is on many waters, right? The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is on waters, or many waters, right? Yes. Look at Revelation now, chapter 1, 11 through 13. John is there on the Isle of Patmos, and Jesus shows up. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the first, the last, the what? And what thou seest, write in a book. Send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, Smyrna, for God was uh, uh, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. So he turned to see a voice. The voice of his many waters, but instead of that, he saw Jesus, or he saw the seven golden candlesticks, which represented the churches. He saw the Word of God, right? He just saw it in a different way. Instead of, see, instead of turning and saying, Wow, look at all the waters, he saw Jesus, right? Who is the Word of God? Jesus. God speaks to us. And the same he speaks to us. The same word. But by different ways. This is what I was trying to say before, right? One time you turn, I, I turn and I see the waters. Right? The voice of many waters. You turn and you see the golden candlestick. Or you see Jesus. Or you see the church, which represents Christ. So it's what I'm saying is this. So I get a dream, or I have a word from the pastor, or the pastor has a word from God, or I, I hear a song, and I'm thinking, Jesus, it's like a love song to Jesus, and it's a rock -a song, a rockabilly song. It's, it's, you know. So we receive a word in a phone conversation. It happens From in a movie, in a song. Some stranger at the store says something, you go, oh my God, that's the Lord. I'm not saying it happens all the time. I'm saying it happens. Many waters, but it's still God. That's how this is how the spirit works. Genesis 1 6. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters 
from the waters, or let that firmament divide the word from the word or the voice from the voice. All right? So in the midst of all the voices, or these ways of speaking, is your firmament. He's speaking to your firmament, or your way of thinking, where you're coming from. Right? Yep. What makes you different? Yep. Your, your, the way that you think, where you come from. Amen? Where, yep. The way you rationalize. Yes. Verse 8. And God called the firm in heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So he called it heaven. Or he's saying it's a heavenly perspective. So how you see he heaven, how you see heaven is in your field of view, or in your perspective. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. How you see the word, how, how you hear it. So he's saying, do you have eyes to see through your firmament, your personal life, your own personality, your own uh, intuition? Yeah. Can you do it through you? Or do you have to have the church yeah. environment? Do you have to have all this hocus pocus? And I don't, I don't mean that in a demeaning way. I'm just saying. The firmament is your sphere or your world, the way you view your world. What makes you different from your twin sister, mm -hmm. right? You're just a little bit different. You, you see things, you hear things, you, you look at things just a little bit different. It's a collection of your way of thinking. Is this parable or this metaphor for the for the firm? Your world viewed through the voice on many waters. Your world viewed through the word of God. How you hear God in your daily life. How you experience God in your routine, in your day-to-day, -day, do you hear him talking through, like Tim would say, do you hear him talking through a, through a client, through a, through a customer, through a, a trainee? I know you have because you've, you've shared things before that. Yeah. Or for, for your boss, who normally you think, what a jerk. And all of a sudden he says something that is so profound, you go, oh my God, I wonder if he has any clue what he's saying. <laughs> yeah. or, or the checkout clerk you know and you go wow or a music a song comes on the radio it's not Christian it's some rock and roll it, it, it's blues it's Little Richard it's I don't know but it's you hearing God talking to you yeah. nobody else is and in fact if you brought it up they think you were nuts <laughs> Don't you know he was doing drugs or they were doing this when that song was I don't care what they were doing. God is using that as a means to speak right. to me. Right. Yes. Matthew 13, verse 10 and 11. I'm sorry, I'm about to wrap up here. I'll finish. And the disciples came and they said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not to them. To them it's not given. So Jesus said, I'm going to say it. The word's going to come forth. But you're going to have to be into me. You're going to have to be in love with me. You're going to have to be in pursuit of me in order to get it. Am I making sense? So you listen to a song. What? I'm so hung up on this Jesus trying to get a hold of me and me trying to get a hold of him that I'm just randomly, I'm not thinking speak to me through this song no, I'm just listening to the song yeah. and bopping along down the road and all of a sudden I'm hearing Jesus talking yeah. to me from the song yes. right? Yes. It, nobody else is why am I? because I'm into Jesus right now I'm, trying, I'm in love with Jesus I'm trying yes. to get everything I can get from Jesus yeah. and so he's the voice, the many waters are speaking yes. to me in my firmament. Wherever I'm at, yes. those voices are going to come. That is right. Thank you. Yes. 
Proverbs 25, verse 2. It's the business of God to hide stuff. Right? But it's the business of kings to search the matter out. We are kings and priests, right? It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out the matter. It's there. It's just a question of, are we going to go looking for it? Yep. Are we going to be alert to it? Right? God's words. There's two questions then that we need to be asking ourselves all the time. Acts chapter 2, verse 12. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean of this? What does this mean? And Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what should we do? So the two questions we should be asking ourselves all the time is, What's this mean? And what should I do? Our firm and many waters, our natural life, and God is speaking supernaturally into it. What's it mean? And what do you want me to do with it? Flash of light in darkness. Revelation. Manifestation. And it's coming to us by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'll close with the old John 3, 27. I'm saying we're writing ourselves off. Too many times we write ourselves off as Christians because we don't have the thus saith the Lord. And we're here in the many waters all the time right now on firmament and we're ignoring it. We're not responding to it because we think, well, I'm nobody. I'm a nothing. I don't have the position, I don't have the history, I don't have the background, I don't have this and I don't have that. You have everything you need, you have yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it's given to him from God. You are the body of Christ. And I guarantee you, he is talking to you. At least once every day, yeah. he is saying something to you. The, the voice of many waters, or the, the waters of his voice are speaking. Yeah. Somewhere, somehow in your life, every day, yeah. into your firmament, into the way that you think, into your way of life, yeah. into the music you listen to, into the TV show, into the movie, into the people you're around, into the places you go. Because he knows your routine before you know it, before it's a routine. And he's got people there, and he's got the words coming to you. And, and it always comes down to this. You hear it, and, it, and, you're, and it's the Dooley, Arkansas. It's the this, or it's the that, or some other crazy thing. And you go, what's that? And then the next question has to be, what do I do? Because he won't make you do anything. Right. I heard a voice behind me and I turned to see the voice. Mm -hmm. What was that? Yeah. And what should I do? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's how simple it really is. <clears throat> I, I'm not against all the other. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. Sometimes you have to have that to get people connected. But I'm telling you, everyone in this room has the Holy Spirit. Yes. And everyone in here hears the waters. Yes. Mm -hmm. You hear it in your own way. Just because it isn't thus saith the Lord, or just because it isn't the thy thou and blue, yeah. it's God speaking to you in your firm, in your way of thinking, in your way of understanding. Yeah. And the question just has to be, what was that? What do you want me to do with it? Yeah. Yeah.
and the crazier it sounds, the more likely it's God. Thanks so much. Okay, I, I so appreciate Tim because he talks about this. Yeah. You're in Walmart, and we know it happens. Yeah. Pray for that person. Yeah. Or he just draw your attention to somebody that otherwise you wouldn't be thinking anything about. And what and, and what you need to be asking yourself is, what do you want me to do? Yeah. Okay, you got my attention. Yeah. I hear the water. Yeah. Now what? Pray for him. Pay your bill. Yeah. Give them a couple of bucks. Yep. You know, whatever. I don't know what it is. You will know. Because it's going to be the waters are going to be speaking into your firm. Yep. What you're capable of doing. What you're able to do. What you, what you feel led to do. Yep. That brings a revelation of God into that person's life. Yes. And more importantly, it brings it into your own. Yep. It makes you aware of the God inside you. Then you say praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we made the devil mad because we stayed 30 minutes longer than he, he thought we were all going to bail. Yes. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good week. Listen to the voice of yes. many waters yes. and respond. God's going to use you yep. mightily in these last days, I guarantee you. Hallelujah. Praise God.